Good morning, everyone. Good Monday morning to you. Welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I'm the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. Well, I was going to continue my uh, examinations, my comments on the destruction and judgment of Satan. However, as many of you know, uh, I spoke at Criswell Bible College or Criswell College in Dallas this last weekend, October the 12th, 2012. And uh, I've had so many emails, uh, even phone calls, and some Facebook inquiries asking, well, how'd it go? How'd it go? How'd it go? <laughs> uh, that I thought, well, okay, I'll give, I'll give a brief report this morning on my experience at Criswell College. Uh, first of all, uh, many of you know, it's certainly uh, an amazing thing for a full preterist to be invited to speak at Criswell College. And uh, not only is it somewhat amazing, but that invitation elicited a lot of negative response. There, there were those who made some very strong attempts to get me booted off. Now what's interesting, of course, is that Criswell was sponsoring this le lectureship, as they state on their website, uh, as an academic exercise. They, they did not and do not agree with the views of all of the men speaking on the dais. And yet in spite of that, the paranoia, the fear of many people uh, was such that they actually wrote letters to Criswell asking some almost demanding that I be removed from the dais. Uh, that type of activity demonstrates uh, just an incredible paranoia. Those people cannot refute covenant eschatology biblically, so they simply seek to squelch it from even being heard. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's kind of, that's sad. But such is the fear in some segments. And um, the report on Criswell itself is much more positive than that. Uh, I must say that the hospitality extended to me by the faculty and staff, by Dr. Johnson and Dr. Creamer, uh, their hospitality was absolutely wonderful, and I'm very appreciative of that. I am certainly appreciative of the invitation. And I appreciate their courage, by the way, in standing up to the pressure that they received to boot me off of the dais. And I must tell you, I, I was very surprised, pleasantly so, at the number of people who came up to me and told me that while they might be partial preterist, they are absolutely open to the idea of the full preterist view because they've been continuing their studies. One gentleman came up to me and he said, I, I am just so thrilled to be here. Uh, I'm torn between the partial view and the, and the full preterist view. And he said, I, I see the logic of the full preterist view. And he said, I can't wait to hear you speak. And I, I just heard comment after comment after comment like that. Now, were there some folks there who were obviously displeased that I was there? Well, I've already mentioned that, but yes, there were some men there. It, it was great to interact with men such as Ken Gentry, uh, who of course obviously disagrees very strongly with the true preterist view, and uh, to interact and to be there with Dr. Beale, who obviously didn't want me there. But be that as it may, they were cordial, uh, if not overtly friendly. And one of the things that I noticed, and I was the first to speak, and my presentation had to do with a theme that is universally admitted to be in Revelation chapter 20 and directly related to the millennium issue. And that is the theme of the vindication of the martyrs. Revelation 21 to 4, clearly about the martyrs. The thousand year reign is about the period of time filling up the measure of the martyrs. And the judgment of Revelation chapter 20, verses 8 to 12, is about the judgment of Satan, the persecutor of the martyrs. 
And I took note of that, by the way, uh, audios of all of the presentations are supposed to be up on Criswell's website uh, very, very shortly. And I even challenged the audience to listen very, very carefully to what the other speakers would have to say about this motif, to whether or not they would actually deal with it. Now, it's interesting to me that the rest of the speakers were very dismissive. They basically ignored what I had to say. Greg Beal simply made the comment that he rejects the true preterist view, full preterist view, because of his views of the bodily resurrection. Now, that's presumptive. It's presuppositional and a priori. Uh, it proves nothing, but that's his view, and that was his expression of why he rejects the full preterist view. Uh, one or two other speakers simply dismissed the full preterist view without even acknowledging anything I had said. All right? Preterism is wrong because of my belief on this. Not one of them dealt with what I said. And here's what's interesting. My lesson was strictly exegetically based. Some of the rest of them attempted to a certain degree. Uh, some exegesis, Dr. Gentry, for instance, and Beale. Most of the other speeches were not truly what you would call exegetical. Uh, they certainly alluded to passages. They certainly quoted some passages. But there was no careful textual, linguistic, care, uh, you know, logical a analysis of the text. Uh, as I expressed, I would love to discuss these issues more. I suggested to Dr. Johnson after the seminar that it would be a great idea if Criswell would actually sponsor a debate between myself and any of the other men on the dais or perhaps someone of their choosing. I would love to see such an event take place. Now, during the Q&A, which is some, I, I love Q&A sessions, there was a situation that was so obviously a setup. I mean, a, a anyone uh, could see that it was orchestrated. Uh, I have my views about who orchestrated it. I won't mention any of that. But be that as it may, I was asked the question of whether or, whether or not I believe that Jesus in heaven right now has a physical fleshly body. My answer to that is no. Now, that drew a, gra a gasp from a lot of people. Now, Quite frankly, it draws a gasp from me to believe that Jesus is still in a physical, fleshly body in heaven. Really? And uh, comment was made that, well, church history and the creeds have pretty well settled the issue that Christ must still have his physical body. Dr. Johnson offered that objection. Well, my response to that was pointing out that when Martin Luther was on trial, King Charles IV stood up and said, why, if Martin Luther is wrong, all of the creeds and church history for a thousand years and longer are all wrong. Why, if Martin Luther is right, look at how wrong all of us have been all of these years. Oh, boy, we applaud Martin Luther for his stand on sola scriptura. And by the way, I also noted that even the Westminster Confession of Faith points out that the final authority is not the creeds, it's not the councils, it's not men, it's sola scriptura. It is as if I said nothing. Creeds and councils, creeds and councils, church history. Hey, um... All of you reform guys out there, all of you reform guys out there, what happened to your appeal to sola scriptura? Someone accused me of believing that Christ does not have a body. I never said that, as I pointed out in the Q&A session. Kenneth Gentry read Colossians 2 verse 9, In him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. I took note of the fact it doesn't say a physical body. You see, 
This entire issue has to do with the nature of the resurrection. The nature of the resurrection of Christ, and by the way, of Christ's post-resurrection, pre-ascension body. A group of men gathered around me and challenged me very nicely. We had a great conversation on the nature of Christ's post-resurrection, pre-ascension body. And I challenged the group of men, five or six of them, to give me their evidence that Christ's post-resurrection, pre-ascension body was a glorified, immortal, transformed human body. Well, the standard response that I got was, well, here were the disciples within a locked room, and Jesus appears to them. He obviously walked through walls. And my response to that was and is, okay, Jesus could walk on water, Matthew 14, John 6. What's the difference in physics? What's the difference in the nature of the, of the miracle between walking on water, passing through walls? Jesus could say to a storm, peace, be still, and nature itself obey his word. If he has the miracle working power to calm and to control weather, you think he couldn't walk through a wall? <laughs> um, when Jesus got on the ship, John chapter 6, it says, immediately, Greek word eutheos, used 82 times in the New Testament, never meaning after a period of a little while, immediately. You know, right then, the ship was at the other side. Now, we know they're in the middle of the sea. The sea is about six miles across. So Jesus immediately transports the ship and all of its inhabitants three, three miles. This is a true beam me up Scotty moment. Now, if Jesus could transport a ship with people on board three miles, we're supposed to believe that it took an immortal, incorruptible, transformed body to walk through a wall. By the way, in my book, Like Father, Like Son, on Clouds of Glory, I have one of the fullest discussions of the nature of Christ's post-resurrection, pre-ascension bodies that I'm aware of. And by the way, I respond to a great extent to Murray Harris's book, on Jesus' resurrection body. So, there's much more that I could say about the Criswell experience. Like I said, overall, it was an absolutely fantastic experience. Uh, no one came up to me in anger except one young man uh, claiming that I was anti-Semitic for claiming, quote, the Jews, unquote, were guilty of crucifying Jesus. We had a really excellent discussion uh, he wound up having to admit that I was essentially right. He wound up using, by the way, some of the same terminology uh, when he started referencing, well, the Jews believe this and the Jews believe that. Well, if you can't use the terminology of the Jews crucified Jesus, then you certainly can't use the terminology the Jews believe this or the Jews believe that. Inconsistency. So anyway, if you want more, on the nature of Jesus' post-resurrection, pre-ascension body, get my book, Like Father, Like Son, on Clouds of Glory. Mention that you saw the offer on YouTube and Facebook, and I'll refund the shipping. Like I said, there's much more that I could, uh, I could say. Again, I appreciate Dr. Johnson. I appreciate Criswell for their courage in inviting me and for withstanding the pressure and the heat to kick me off. I appreciate all of those who attended. And uh, all, of, my goodness, I've already received so many positive emails supportive of what I did. Men who were there that I didn't get to meet, who are partial preterists, who believe that I needed to have the opportunity. Men who are preterists, who supported what I said. Hey, it was just a great experience. Many said, this is a historic event. And I agree. Thanks for joining me for this morning's morning musings. We'll get back to our discussion of the defeat of Satan on the flip side.